Okay, here we are with another boat project. My task tonight, we're up here in the V-berth, V-berth, is to replace this old cigarette lighter, which has never been used, which is good. Um, replace that with this. So it's a, we, we use 12 volt on this boat. So it's a 12 volt dual port USB charger up to 4.8 total amps. So it's a smart charger too. So it um, will adjust the charging rate for phones and other things. Um, but the idea would be to put this right here next to the bed. It's a nice, charging thing port for your device and then I have a another plan for it that I'll show you guys in a minute I will show you guys tonight actually if I can get this USB charger hooked up so first things first let's get the old one out so it looks like it's just one flathead there one flathead there and then this ring pops off and then this is our hanging locker. So I should just be able to, oh, it's like already loose too. So I should just be able to go up here and pop it out. So let's get going. Okay, so I got it pulled off of the wall there. There it is right there. We got my multimeter out and I wasn't getting power to these ends. Uh, so when I don't get power to the ends, I tr start tracing it back and I look for splices. And here's some splices. And I don't know what this is. Just don't mind the hair. Doesn't even look like that's our hair. Okay, this is interesting. Look what we have here. This is on the, <laughs> this is on the hot side. So the, the positive side. And we have a, a bolt, some nuts, and a couple of washers wrapped in this old electrical tape. And I am guessing there's probably a, uh, a round crimp fitting on the end here that this is through bolted to. Um, that is definitely not a good sign. <laughs> Although that's very entertaining. Um, let's take this off and see, see what's in there. So uh, one second. Okay, so we got, so this washer was on the end there and it was crimp tight with that nut. <laughs> So we pulled that nut off and sure enough, we have a, a little loop from the source going around to this end crimp connector in the ring style. Rings are good, rings are good, but uh, this situation with the bolt and the washers and the nut is not good. So, what I'm gonna do now, instead of taking off this one, this one looks mostly okay. We're gonna assume this one's our positive. Get that straightened out. And then we'll turn on our bolt meter here. And we will connect that up to positive. We'll connect that to negative, and we are still not getting a, a reading. So my next step will be to 
cut this off, strip that back, and do another test because this could be the problem. And if that doesn't work, then we know this whole wire needs to change. But uh, this whole wire likely should change because this is clearly not marine grade. Um, it's not tinned. This is just like some kind of thin vinyl. Um, not even like a, yeah, it's just not good. So, uh, but at least, let's at least see if it works and then we'll decide next steps from there. So I'm gonna nip this off and strip that back and do another test, we'll be right back. All right, so no power here. So this is, this was our negative, this was our positive. Ran it through the voltmeter again, no power. So, in order to get our guy hooked up, and because this is not marine grade and sketchy, let's uh, let's see if we can't trace this wire back to where it hooks up to a supply and. Um, evaluate if we can replace this. Figured out where those wires go. Oop. So here we are working here. It goes under the hanging locker. Down here to this locker. Up and around into our mess in here. And it goes to this bus bar that is on our 12 volt ship switch panel as the pilot house. Which makes sense because we're right under the pilot house and under all those instruments. Oh, there's our fax in case anybody wants to fax us anything. We are hooked up. Just kidding. Um, so because it goes to the switch called the pilot house, I don't want to have to turn on everything connected up in there just to turn on that 12 volt power supply at, in the in the viewer so i think i'm going to run it back up into the switch panel in a different way bypassing this so what's uh we'll see what that looks like Quick recap. So you know how they say, when we say, they say, they. You don't know who they are. Um, I wanted to install this. <laughs> so that one little thing should be an easy change route, right? I mean, I even bought this so it will fit into the existing hole. <laughs> like tried to make it as easy as possible for me but you know what they say but work takes 42 times as long and is 13 and times as expensive well not expensive this project I mean these were like ridiculously expensive I don't know what is going on but like ridiculously expensive Anyway, <clears throat> but the project itself to hook that up is not that expensive. It just takes a long time because I had to, you know, pull that out, undo the wiring, and the wiring was screwed into the wall with these little clips, which are fine, but I just haven't found a good way to secure wiring to the wall. I'm still looking at that. But then all of that resulted in that coming out <clears throat> All of that stuff had to be moved, <laughs> right? So, it just takes a long time. But now I have a plan. So when David was here, Devin's dad, we started down the path of doing this, doing the same thing up here with a USB charger. So when we're in the galley, when we're out in the cockpit, we have a quick, easy way to charge devices with USB. 
And what we did was we found that we could use a dedicated switch on our switch panel back here. So there is a dedicated switch for that USB charger, which is way overkill. So my idea is why don't we just run all of the USB chargers across the boat to that one switch. And that way they're all centralized. We know how to turn them on and off. Um, and it all just goes to one place and it's one thing. Whereas before this was hooked up to or in order to turn that on, that cigarette, the old cigarette lighter up there, you'd have to turn on all of the pilot house equipment just to get that running up there. And that's not fun. Well, we don't need all of this on just to power a USB charger. So my thought is, let's just hook it up to the switch that was set aside for USB chargers and keep it all in one thing. And I got the thumbs up from Devin. So you know we're on the right track. <laughs> Thanks, babe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, uh, so let's see what we need to do for that. All right, so I've got the this switch <clears throat> hooked up. Ran new wire from the panel down here, under here, through here, through the hanging locker, up to here. Right there. <laughs> so now what we're gonna do is take our voltage tester and make sure we get 12 volts here. <sighs> so let's go ahead and uh, make sure we got 12 volts. Great. So wonderful, excellent. So now turn that off to save the battery. So now we've got new wires, properly installed, heat shrinked, marine grade, tinned copper, name brand, anchor, anchor marine grade, right, right here. So we are legit. So I'm gonna turn the switch off at the panel and then hook up this guy, and he is pretty easy. Uh, you can see right there, negative on the left, positive on the right. So um, we will uh, hook that up next. And then this job is nearly done. <laughs> Look what we have here, USB ports. No more gross cigarette lighter. So, um, don't worry about the discoloration around it because Devin's going to be painting and varnishing in here. So you all get to join me on the maiden voyage. Will my headphones charge? So the time-honored tradition of making sure your USB is in the right way. First try is always good. Let's plug in. There should be a little red light that pops on when I do that. Yes! <laughs> it works! It works! Look, it's working! We can lay in bed, we can charge devices. Yes. Hey babe! What? It works! Tasha, it works! Look at those little feet, look at those little feet again. So, uh, <laughs> working on Yes, yes, okay. So, I will end this tonight, because I gotta eat, I'm hungry, clean up a little bit, and then tomorrow, you will see the real purpose of why this is here. Well, an extremely beneficial purpose for why this is here. More to come tomorrow night. Now it's clean up, eat dinner, and go to bed. 
in the last few videos when we've been talking about fans, uh, I told you all about Hot Feet Season. It is officially here. Check it out. So, inside the boat, 78.4 degrees. Outside the boat, 78.4 degrees. Hot Feet Season is officially here. And so what we've done to combat that is obviously the fans. So we've, you know, we've talked about the fans. These have been working great. Um, it's really nice. This push button, lock in place, low speed, medium speed, high speed. But notice hot feet season serious business so up here with these fans we lay our head here on our berth and our feet go down there so fan head feet that fan is pretty far away from our feet same with this one fan head feet hot feet season and a fan at our head those two things don't mix. So, if you remember last night, we installed a working USB charge port here. Not only does that charge our devices, but look what it will power. Ta-da! A USB fan vehicle mounted USB fan we are a vehicle on here on Yara but clearly this is not marine grade uh, it is a cheapy plastic Amazon fan that basically sits on the dashboard of your car and plugs into the USB port of your car. So they market this as, you know, if you have a low, low powered AC unit in your car, the fans aren't working in your car, you just want extra fans in your car, you can just mount that on your dash. Oh, hot feet season also comes with the ice maker. <laughs> so if you hear that in the background, you know what that is. But basically what you do is you mount this on your dash, it comes with these uh, adhesive pads here. You plug it into a USB port. Most cars have a USB port or 12 volt. And you push this button to turn the fans on. And they can be positioned. You can turn them. So the idea behind that is USB fans hot feet season you get my drift so we take this up here and the idea is to take this mount it like that upside down on the bottom of that that's our the bottom of our anchor locker there and then these fans can be twisted turned pointed in pretty much any direction and I wanted specifically a push button one. So all you gotta do is push these buttons to get a three speed. And because, so a little toe, while we're laying in bed, a little toe could just pop up there, turn on the fan with a, a push of a button. A lot of these style fans, there's a lot of options, but a lot of them have like a, a dial that you gotta turn, which is great for those with fingers, but this is for our feet. And so I thought the push button um, would be a better option. So just pop a toe up, push a button to turn it on or off. So the secret USB purpose was that. So they're pretty like the fan people, whoever made this fan are really like specific oddly specific around it has to have two amps it has to have two amps if it doesn't have two amps you won't get all three speeds 
Well, this guy's a 4.8 amp, so we should be fine. But you're gonna join me on the inaugural test of the fans, feet fans. So again, the time-honored tradition of making sure your USB is going in the right way. And got it. So now we're plugged in there. Now I should be able to push this button and turn the fan on. Yep. That's low speed. Medium speed. High speed. Now this one. Low speed. Medium speed. They're both on high speed. Hot feet season, we are gonna beat you. So now, all I gotta do is adhere this. I'm probably not gonna use the permanent sticky back that is the stickers that are on here. I'm probably gonna use Velcro because this thing is actually kind of handy. Like you can plug this in anywhere there's a USB port. So maybe we could take it to the car or maybe we put it on the dock or maybe we put it in the saloon or the galley or wherever we are. Uh, so I think the Velcro will allow us a little more flexibility. Um, and the other thing was it only comes with like this tiny, like maybe five feet, three foot cord, which makes sense. Cause if this is on your dashboard of your car, your USB is just basically right below that in your center console. So what I also got was just uh, a couple of USB extenders. So just a, uh, a male and a female end here um, to run that to along the side of the berth to get it into that USB port that we installed yesterday. So let's first off find that Velcro because I need to find the Velcro so I can complete this installation and then it's just a matter of running the wire where I want it, the USB cable where I want it, plugging it in and hot feet season zero Yara Mm, we got the ice, we got the other fans, we got the foot fan. I think we're up three to zero on hot feet season. Here we go. So, check it out. The USB cable. Not the prettiest thing or cleanest install, but I mean, really, we wanted that to be flexible. So we can take our fan where we want to go. So the idea is we're laying in bed. Devin's feet get hot. She can just come up here with her little toe. Push the button. Boom. Instant relief. So I just uh, ran the USB cable back along the, the back side of our installation here. We did a previous video on that. Um, but yeah, that uh, pretty easy, like one of the easiest boat projects probably, and a huge win, because <laughs> I keep saying it, but you guys don't understand. Hot feet season, it's, it's a lot. <laughs> uh, a lot a yacht it's a yacht um, but this will help so I'm glad it's done uh, now it's time to clean up and enjoy the upper 70 degree weather see you guys yep Oop. low medium Hi. How is that? Oh, it's everything I've dreamed of. <laughs> and more. Turn on the other one too. Perfect. X. Oh, and you can even X. <laughs>
for the longest time all winter, right where all of this patio furniture is, was our Heart Dodger. But right now, it's just sitting in place, but we're going to get it installed. Please remember to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss an episode.